Hey, what's up guys, Lord Civic here, and today we're going to be doing a comparison video between the G9neo and the G9 OLED. These are two absolutely sublime displays that come in a ridiculously large form factor that allow you to be immersed and engrossed in whatever content that you're doing at the specific moment in a way that is just absolutely extraordinary. Now with saying that though, I honestly thought it was gonna be as simple as saying the OLED is better than the Neo. You guys know how much I love OLED technology when it comes to this picture quality, black levels, contrast, and that's the way it handles ridiculously bright scenes versus kind of like darker scenes. Now with saying that though, it's just not as simple as that. The Neo does some stuff differently than the OLED and the OLED does stuff differently than the Neo. And in different cases, that might be more beneficial depending on the specific type of person you are and what type of content you're gonna be consuming. Now with saying that all of those things have different factors that come behind that and the build quality, the curvature, which is very, very important, um, the stand, the display itself, everything from the contrast, the picture quality, the black levels, the viewing angles, and all of that come into play when deciding which monitor is going to be more ideal for you. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a complete breakdown of all those different aspects that I spoke about. And with saying that, if you guys like what you see, please make sure to hit the like subscribe button. With saying that, let's hop right in. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna be talking about with this monitor is the curvature of each display. Now, honestly, for me, I'm the curvature was never gonna be the deciding factor for me. Um, and after using both monitors, I don't mind the more massive curve on the Neo compared to the OLED, but that's not gonna be the same case for everybody. There's a lot of people that are going to be using this a monitor for gaming. Some people are gonna be using it for productivity. Some people are gonna be using it for content creating. Some people are going to be using it for a little of three, a little of the two, or maybe even just a single one like I just said. But with saying that, this monitor and the curvature kind of comes into play in different ways. Now with saying that, when it comes to gaming, um, I have found that overall I enjoy the OLED more. It's picture quality, the way that it handles color accuracy and different stuff like that has been the bigger thing and the bigger drive for me compared to Neo. Now with saying that, the Neo does do a little better with its curvature in some specific games and some titles. And those are things like Forza, racing games like Project Cars, or even games like Microsoft Flight Simulator, where you literally need to be engrossed and immersed and not be able, not, not be able to, not have to turn your head and move your eyes around the screen a lot. And that's just something the Neo can give you over the OLED. Now, with saying that though, the slight curvature on the OLED is no slacker at all as well. Um, I am somebody that sits about two, two and a half feet away from my monitor, and I really haven't found that much times where I had to literally move my head to see what's going on in the screen. But with saying that, there's going to be some people that in specific cases are going to have the monitor right in front of them, either just because that's the way they like to do things or because of the lack of space on their desk or whatever they decide to put their monitor on. Now with saying that, when it comes to content creating, I believe that the OLED wins that category. Um, the picture quality, the black levels, and just being able to edit videos and pictures and stuff like that with the color accuracy and the absolute gorgeousness of the OLED, it's not even a comparison per se. Now, with saying that though, when it comes to other means of productivity, whether it be coding, uh, stock market trading, Medicaid work, typing papers and emails and different stuff like that, I feel that's really where the Neo shines, not only because um, of OLEDs and you know the cases of burn-in, and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later in the video, but when you're doing stuff like that where you're gonna have static images on the screen all the time, you do not wanna be doing that on an OLED display. Now with saying that, also when it comes to productivity and stuff like that, you're not gonna be wanting to move your head just to see what's going on, or especially you have multiple windows on the monitor and different stuff like that. And as I said, in my case, I haven't really ever had to like move my head or like dart my eyes a lot around because as I said, I have my monitor two, two and a half feet away from me. But if you're having it right in front of you on your desk, you do not wanna have to move your head around and like dart your eyes and different stuff like that. And that level of engrossment and immersion on a Neo is at a slight advantage compared to the OLED when it comes to 
uh, engrossment uh, factors. Now, next thing I want to highlight when it comes to this monitor is the viewing angles, the build quality, and the stand. Now, when it comes to viewing angles, I think that also plays into part where, with why um, Samsung put a larger curvature on the Neo versus the OLED. A big draw for a lot of people when it comes to OLED displays is its perfect viewing angles. That means that when you're looking from the left or the right or from above or even below the monitor, it's going to look the absolute same no matter what angle you're looking at. As I said, perfect viewing angles. It is an absolute sight to behold. Now I was saying that compared to the Neo, if you are kind of at an almost off axis just by a little bit, a lot of the colors on the monitor will look almost washed out or um, even in some cases, they'll be like even more blooming and different stuff like that. And I feel like that plays in the part with why they put the larger curvature on the Neo because with the way that the panel type is, with it being almost enveloped in front of you, it gives you that perfect look of the display but as i said if you're just off by a little a lot of the magical gloriness or whatever whatever way you describe it of the monitor starts to kind of look a little eh, i don't know this is the best way to explain it now with saying that when it comes to the build quality and the stand i just love the look of the oled um, i when i got the neo i thought it was absolutely gorgeous but after seeing the absolute sleek back plate and the way that the stand goes on the OLED, it's just really not even a competition. Um, the almost metallic look that's found on the stand and in the back of the OLED is, the only way to explain it is really, it's just sexy. Um, the back of the Neo uh, almost looks like the uh, old dinosaur computers of old. And I absolutely, I don't have it here on display because I think like a week after I just got the Ergotron HX, I couldn't stand the stand on the Neo. It's very obtrusive. Um, it's dying to look, takes up a lot of room on your desk compared to the one that's on the OLED that allows you to slip stuff underneath or put stuff on top. It's just really not even a comparison. Um, also, the uh, Neo is, a, I don't know how much heavier, but it's it's a lot heavier than the, uh, the OLED. And uh, I honestly, I love the Ergotron HX and I haven't put it on my OLED. I don't think I will. I love being able to maneuver stuff around my desk. And even though you can maneuver the Ergotron HX, it's like a two person job because the monitor is just so freaking heavy. Um, and I feel like it might be a little easier with the OLED, but you know, it's just like a case by case basis. So when it comes to viewing angles, OLED wins, you know, perfect viewing angles. Uh, the uh, Neo is very nice when you're like, dead center down it looks really pretty but as I said you go off axis a little bit and it just starts to lose some of its magic um, and then when it comes to stand weight and then the look of the monitor on the back plate and different stuff like that I think the OLED wins that as well so honestly what you guys have all been waiting for what do I think when it comes to the picture quality the brightness level the contrast and the black levels of the OLED compared to the Neo. And I don't even think it's a comparison. I have put out so many gaming videos of the OLED to the Neo, and it's just, the camera just does not capture the sheer gorgeousness of the OLED. And the camera doesn't even capture the sheer gorgeousness of the Neo per se, honestly, as well. But the OLED is a sight to behold. Playing games in HDR and seeing the peak highlights on the display compared to the absolutely inky black levels and the absolutely sublime shadow detail. And oh my gosh, don't even get me started on the colors. I played Red Dead Redemption today and had it side by side between the Neo and the OLED. The color accuracy and the, just the way that the OLED is able to display color in gaming compared to the Neo is, it's like everything just looks so much more lifelike. The grass detail alone in Red Dead Redemption almost looks like 3D dimensional. Like that's only the best way to say it, like explain it. It literally looks like the colors are flying off the screen with the OLED playing games like Destiny or the blood gushing Doom Eternal or Diablo and watching all the spells just 
light fire to the screen as like the black dark crevices of the cave or whatever dungeon you're in it's just absolutely gorgeous a lot of people are saying that the neo the brightness levels because the neo just gets ridiculously bright i think samsung advertises that it gets up to 2000 nits compared to the 400 uh black point um that's found on the oled i don't know what the peak brightness number is is but anyway regardless after turning the brightness up to max and the peak brightness up to the highest setting on the oled the monitor honestly gets plenty bright for me now i would say that there is going to be specific cases where if your room is just too bright whether it be the sunlight or the lights casting or whatever in your room or different stuff like that yes the oled might not be the monitor for you because you know those are specific case by case basis but if you can get the specific lighting setting um where you know it's not too bright but it's not too dark but i mean i guess it can be too dark too dark well honestly honestly i feel like this is like a retina burning screen and you know not it's not it's not really retina burning i play with gaming glasses anyway regardless but i feel like to be honest a lot of the this monitor gets is too dim is a little overblown um i feel like maybe the people haven't tinkered with the settings enough or uh you know maybe they just are in a super bright room like if the sun's directly shining your screen then you're gonna have no problem with that on the neo like this monitor is so bright but if you're having the sun directly shine on the oled then i can definitely see how that specific case might be a little different for you now also with it being an oled screen and all the individual pixels being handled individually by the panel the picture quality on uh on the oled is just gorgeous it's not 4k level but i remember a lot of the times when i would be playing games on the uh, g9 neo especially let's say like horizon zero dawn and i remember like aloy's hair and the texture details on her clothing and stuff i wish it was like more crisp found on like my lg cx and even though it's not 4k the g9 oled definitely gives me that same um feeling the texture detailing on whether it be Arthur's clothes in Red Dead Redemption or the detailing on your Diablo 4 character or the fabrics and fibers on Spider-Man and Batman's cape and Spider-Man's suit is just a sight to behold. Everything just looks so crisp. Every detail is just absolutely amazing to look at and that's not to say that the g9 neo is just ugly or whatever and different stuff like that but i just love the way that the oled handles picture quality the color and just the black levels and shadow detail compared to the uh neo now i'm saying that the last thing i want to talk about is static um static images or static text and static work and you know playing games for hours on end now it's saying that burning is something you can definitely come across it's going to happen eventually it can be a year which i highly doubt this tomorrow will get burning here it can be four years it could be seven years it can be 10 years i honestly don't plan on having to monitor that long the way i love technology is i'm always getting what's new and I'm feeling like there might be something within the next two, three years that catches my eye that I'll probably switch over to. But with saying that, that's definitely something you have to think of and every game is not going to support 32 by nine. Now with saying that, in my Diablo 4 video, some of you guys highlighted that if I play Diablo, which I do plan on playing for hours on end, um, the game does not support 32 by 9 it has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio at max out so the two sides of the screens will be black on the oled looks absolutely gorgeous compared to the neo where it kind of looks like uh the monitor is not like fully on the screen not fully not the monitor is not fully on the screen it doesn't look like the image is fully on the screen you kind of get like these shadowy gray details that are found on the neo compared to the inky blacks on the oled now with saying that if you play that game for let's say like 3,000, 4,000 hours or whatever on this monitor, the pixels on the right and left side of the screen are going to be brighter than the center of the screen. It's gonna look kind of weird. But then again, it's like, oh, do you want the grayish bars on the Neo? And then it's you gotta kind of like pick your poison of like what specific games you're gonna play. You gotta like think about that, and especially when it comes to productivity. If you're doing coding and a whole bunch of like work where it's going to be like static images, you also got to think about, and there's just so many factors of this monitor that you got to think of. 
Um, and I was saying that I really hope that all the stuff that I discussed has made it a little bit easier for you guys when choosing which monitor that you want to get. As I said, it's not as clear cut as the OLED is better than Neo, even though I'm just raving on and on about the OLED. The only reason I am is because it fits my ideal standard of what I expect from a monitor, or not what I expect from a monitor, what I want from a monitor. But the Neo, in a lot of people's cases, might be the more so monitor that you're supposed to go with. But with saying that, thank you guys all again so much for watching. I hope I was able to cover a lot. If there's anything else that you want to know about these two monitors, please make sure to put your questions in the description, not description, in the comment section below. Um, with saying that, you guys can also look forward to a full review of the G9 OLED very, very soon. And with saying that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video.